questions about sticking and trapping. Okay, so first thing, what's your approach to sticking and trapping? Okay, uh, second related question, where does it fit? And the third one is, do you actually still practice? Oh, let's do one at a time. All yeah. right, let's do this. Don't forget. <laughs> okay, my approach to uh, trapping, right? Like, in the 90s, I was doing a lot of this kind of stuff, which is still really popular, right? And it works pretty good because you're learning to feel, right? Like, if it pushes on my right eye, right? Then I go this way. If it pushes on my left eye, I go this way. And there's a lot of combination. You still see it a lot on YouTube, right? This stuff is popular. So is this stuff, right? And we did a lot of that in the 90s. And then later on, I start to notice, at least for trapping, right? Really popular stuff like that. Even if I move my hand first before I slap his hand, he still manages to block me a lot, right? Like maybe nine times out of ten because he can feel it when I slap him. And he can feel it when I grab so he always ends up blocking me, and then I do something about it, right? To me, that's a lot of extra work, right? So later on, I started changing my approach, and for example, he pushes on my left shoulder, right? And I do stuff like that. So I'll take one technique like this, and I'm gonna explain it, because we only have a short clip, right? The first thing I wanna learn is to find the ground. So when he pushes on center, right? And I learn how to find the ground. So if he lets me go, right? This doesn't happen. I don't want that to happen. That's not what pressure is. If he pushes again like that, I want to find the ground, and then when he lets me go, I'm fine, right? So just gently get your part of the pressure. And then he lets you go, you should be fine. It's really hard to learn how to do that, to find that alignment with, with a straight point. So when you're first learning it, instead of using a straight point, use a bigger surface, right? Like, you know, you see in each one is standing, you see in Tai Chi, punching, that kind of stuff. So just make a ball, get the guy to push gently, and then learn to find the ground. Once you can do that, get him to push your shoulder, right? I'm rolling him up, but I'm not using my arm to move his arm out of the way. If I did that, I'll trigger a back fist, right? Because he's trained, he'll feel that, right? So I don't want to actually move his arm with my arm. So when I feel pressure coming in, I just roll it. So if he pushes his shoulder, I just roll it. And then he loses balance a little bit because he can't feel me doing this because I'm not using my arm to push it. What I'm doing is I'm just turning my hand over as in the same time I'm moving my spine, right? Rise, drill, overturn, fall. You see that in Shen Yu. You see that in Cloud Hands and Tai Chi, right? You also see that in Bagua and single palm chains. That's a very common skill, but it's really big in form. So we're gonna make it really small, he pushes, and that's all we're doing. And now we've got his third leg, I got him off balance, right? Once you can do that, so you find the ground, you roll the guy off, then you can grab him and move him. He's a big guy, even with two fingers, two hands, you can actually yank him off balance, right? The important thing when I pull him, the reason why I lost his balance is, I'm not just moving his arm really hard. What I'm doing after I roll him off balance is, when I grab him, I am finding that feeling the spine. Right? Once I can do that, I play the second one. So I got pressure going this way, and then I reverse the muscle that way. And that shakes his spine, right? It's hard for me to know this, and then she can feel it. But I'm actually shaking his spine going forward and then backward. Right? The important thing is, I'm not using me to move him. If I use me to move him, he can feel it, he can block me, right? As soon as I grab his arm hard, that triggers a response from me. I don't want to do that. So if he pushes hard, I want to take him off balance. Now, he can't do anything about it, right? So I'm not using me to yank on him. If I did that and I miss, this would happen and I lose my balance. Instead, I want to use him to move me, like I'm pulling on a rope up a mountain or something. So I'm not trying to move him, I'm using him to move me. Now, every time I make a little movement, I move his feet, right? So that would be an explanation of it. So I'm actually going up, around, and down, and to the side. So there's a lot of circles in this. I'm going up, down, to the side, and down again. So he pushes, I'm just rolling him off, and then I grab, right? Once you get better at that, you make the movement a lot smaller. I'm doing the exact same move, but now I'm making it smaller. Instead of physically grabbing him, I'm just rolling with my fist and hitting, right? Once you can do that, you can make the technique even smaller. 
So it appears like I just thrust my hand, but what I did was I coil into a circle. When I feel the ground, once I feel them pushing the ground, I roll them off, and now I have a clear line, right? So techniques don't matter, right? Just, you feel the energy, right? These are just attributes when you hit. So it's hard to explain that unless you can feel it, right? So you still practice, sir. So next question? You still practice it? I don't really practice sticking that much anymore. And even when I did, I did a lot of one-hand stick. I didn't do that much two-hand sticking. Not because two-hand sticking is not good, it's really good. But I noticed when you're fighting, a lot of times when a guy touch you, you always end up in a one-hand situation. Rarely, unless I'm punching with two hands, right? Do I end up in a two-hand situation, right? But right now, I don't practice a lot. I haven't practiced a lot of sticking for a long time. If you do a, non, a lot of non-cooperative work, some people, they will get a lot of pressure and arm contact when they're sparring or when they're fighting. If that's the case, you should practice sticking, right? Some people, when they test their stuff out non-cooperatively, they might not get a lot of arm contact, or even if they get a arm contact, they might not get a lot of pressure type of arm contact. In that case, if you don't need it, then spend less time on it. One more question, right? So how does it all fit in? You can use sticking in many ways in throws and locks. Sticking is just an attribute, not a technique. So there's too many examples in a short clip. I'll just give you one. For example, if you're sparring and the guy puts his hands away sparring, I don't know what he's going to do and I come in on I might end up making arm contact. It's a jab. I might end up making arm contact. Or sometimes a lot of time you get a guy in a clinch, right? If you start throwing stuff like this, he might be able to grab you, right? So instead of doing that, he might be able to use this. So I'm using pressure. He's got his hand up. And then when I bump into his arm, I can feel his spine, right? And I can turn him by feeling where his pressure is going. Right? So we're sparring. I'm hitting him. Sorry. Sorry. He's jabbed. Then I end up touching him. As soon as I touch him, we end up in a sticking mode, right? So that would be an example of how to use it. But you don't go up planning to use it. You're just attacking this guy. If you end up bumping into something, there's your sticking. But if you don't chase his hands around, right? If you see the guy's hands up, you don't go, okay, I'm gonna try to use this. No, it's an accident. You come in attacking him. If he touches you, automatically it triggers stuff. If he doesn't touch you, don't chase it. Why would you chase his shields around? If he doesn't put his shields up, hit him, right? So, that's it. Thanks, man. All right.